Shivani, you come. Yes, Shivan, in these days uh, you are watching TV and you are also going through the newspaper also. Can you throw some light that how the problem of uh, uh, these farmers who are peacefully protesting, how this, what will be the solution? Right now, Supreme Court is still arguing uh, laws for so uh, or committee even arguing. The committee ke paas ko apna. Or speak in English. Try to speak in English. No doubt you can. Uh, when when you feel some uh, uncomfortable in speaking English, because all the uh, members will be there, some judges, high court judges, they will speak in English. If you if you are uncomfortable, uncom there is no harm in expressing in Punjabi, Hindi. Because they also knowing, they are also knowing Punjabi. If there is absolutely no bar, you can speak. Sometimes they may also say you that explain in English. Yes. So three farm laws were passed in June 2020. Ordinances were passed, and in September they were converted into acts. They were uh, the farmers are protesting, so they want that they, these laws should be repealed because they. The whole act goes against their interest. They think that their will, lands will be snatched from them. And right now, Supreme Court has implemented stay on these laws for some time. That committee will uh, hear their problems and report to them. Then they will uh, further uh, give a judgment on this or further order will be passed by the Supreme Court. But solutions, sir, right now, the government is According saying. According to this, you, what is the solution? In the brief, if you are asked, they are saying brief two or three lines that this should be done in such a situation because all the farmers they are sitting in open and it is very tough, tough job they are doing. They are eating, they are, they are uh, struggling, their families are also there. We have seen many of them have died. It's a personal opinion or? Yes, but say your personal opinion. What is your personal opinion? Sir, I think they should be repealed because they not only go against the farmers, they go against whole of the society, especially the uh, Essential Commodities Act because uh, they have removed all the uh, uh, sir, sealing, uh, sealing on the hoarding. They have removed and it will affect negatively on the society as a whole too. Alright, sure. Now, you you put into another and another about law. What do you know about set off? Set, set off uh, in criminal law, which is the section where we use it, how it is used. So, in criminal law, section 4, uh, 428 of CRPC, it talks about set off uh, that period of detention during investigation, trial, or inquiry. At the end, when he is convicted, and court is sentencing him, that time of period will be reduced from that uh, sentence and he will be uh, he will be in jail for remaining time period. It does not apply on imprisonment and default of payment of time. Oh yes, Explain the law relating to confession of court use. Confession of court use. The confession uh, under Evidence Act Section 30 talks about the uh, confession of co accused in a joint trial when three or four accused are uh, co-jointly tried for the same offence. When one co-accused confesses and says that other were also involved with him, court can consider that uh, confession against other co-accused also, but it is not compulsion that court has to consider against them also. Oh, yes, it is not one question. From CRPC, <coughs> what are the rights of Muslim wife under 125 of CRPC? Muslim wife can apply for maintenance under section 125 because that is a uniform civil code which is, it is applicable to everyone. And under the personal laws? Personal laws, she has to, uh, if there is a divorce case, then Muslim uh, 1986, uh, 1986 Act will be applicable. And then if the period is, uh, we have to see if the period in section 3 is applicable, she can apply for maintenance during the, if the period she will be given for 
maintenance she can be given mehar or dabar also properties also in the name of the what is the difference between motive and intention motive and intention intention is a state of mind motive is the uh, we can say the actions or the previous actions what were the previous actions of the accused like he was seen again motive and again. you can say purpose also purpose you can also say same. particular for example you can say a was uh, a time and again had tried to shoot b and mm -hmm. it, uh, when ultimately he killed him it will give the motive that he had an intention to kill him that gives the motive that sorry motive is that they were case in between them like uh, with related to land dispute and he wanted to hit for himself a and he shot uh, killed b for that land that that is a motive and he wanted to kill that is intention state of mind with the lot of motive be very clear motive mean a person is going to kill another person to gain his money to gain his property to grab his property so that his property may for example grandson has fired at uh, grandfather for the purpose of obtaining property that was the motive behind that oh yes what's the question on your side differentiate between the terms dishonesty and fraudulently dishonesty is as per section uh, as per ipc it is defined that when someone acts uh, wrongfully uh, acquires wrongful loss or wrongful gain from the property when he is acting dishonestly fraudulently is uh, from initial his intention is to deceive the person this is also defined in ipc ari shivani on the section 438 which is dealing with anticipating in anticipating gain you might have read that every person can go or get or getting anticipating Whether there are some events over which bar has been created, that if he has committed this events, he cannot file such an application. We are we are distributing bail. Which are those events? So recently, amendment has been done in IPC in uh, uh, in four thirty eight only in section four thirty eight only mm -hmm. that in rape cases when the rape is against the girl below sixteen years and below the age of twelve years. Then in that case, the person cannot go for the anticipated relief. And gang rape also. Yeah, yeah. There are other sections also. Gang rape. In Shivani, you might have gone through the CRPC that there are various sections under which the court can accept personal appearances. Where we can dispense with personal appearances of the accused. Under which sections? So section two hundred five, two hundred five, and there is under chapter eight, one section one hundred fifteen. The accused is asked for security for keeping peace and good behavior. And then also an order is issued to him. Then court can dispense with his appearance under section two hundred five also, and under section one seventeen during the inquiry and trial also, if the accused is creating disturbance. Or he is not in court. One seventeen, sir. One seventeen. One seventeen during inquiry and trial. Mm -hmm. He can be asked if he is creating disturbance for the. That is three hundred seventeen. Three hundred seventeen, sir. Three hundred seventeen. Three hundred seventeen. Where it has been provided. Accused one hundred fifteen, sir. In three hundred seventeen, what is the case uh, situation? Sir, so during inquiry and trial, if the accused is creating disturbance in the court. Or then also court can ask him to uh, he is not required to be present personally or if his uh, case can be conducted by his pleader he is not required then court also can ask him. Yes. Can you explain doctrine of necessity under criminal law? Doctrine of necessity is uh, described under section eighty one of IPC. When person to avoid a bigger harm he is causing another harm. Uh, without any criminal intention or knowledge, just to avoid a bigger harm. Can you give some example of that? So the example itself is given in IPC that there are two three houses they are on fire, and after he is the person is uh, demolishing the fifth house so that the fire does not spread further. Yes, Shivani, you can. Yes, Shivani.
what is the difference between difference between attempt to murder or attempt to culpable homicide and where it has been provided? So the attempt to murder is provided in the section 307 of IPC. It is that when a person has uh, done some act, uh, one of the acts mentioned the 300, uh, 300, one of the four, but it has not been completed. The person was alive, the person did not die. Then 307 will be applicable. Uh, and culpable homicide is 308 section of IPC, uh, attempt to culpable homicide. Sir, yes, sir. What is the mm -hmm. yes 308? You are 308 right. 308 attempt yeah. to calculate. Save the confidence. Don't uh, uh, confidence. get reply from uh, the board members. So 300, should, 308 section talks about attempt, attempt to calculate. Attempt to murder. 307 attempt to calculate. 308. And what is the uh, do you know the punishment also? That what is the punishment under 307? When is the previous conviction of an accused relevant? Uh, when person has been convicted in a present case, the uh, ongoing case, then only uh, the charge of previous conviction will be raised uh, before the court, and that is uh, section 236 and 248 of CRPC, and then only charge will be levied on the previous conviction. Yes, no, there is one word living will. Living will. Do you know about living will? Or you will explain it. So, uh, living will topic is related to section 309 of IPC, attempt to commit suicide. Uh, a judgment was passed by the Supreme Court, Common Court, Pass versus Union of India. In that case, the court has said that right to die with dignity is uh, uh, our uh, fundamental right under, say, under Article 21 and person can make a document which is called living will. In that case, he can say that in future when I uh, go into a vegetation state, then uh, my family members, or he can give the names that they can, with uh, consultation of doctors, they can uh, pull the plug and uh, self all, all living will should be attested, should be executed. Living will, if somebody wants that he wants to write a living will, he can execute that living will and go to the Judicial Minister first class with the two witnesses. The two witnesses and that will will be attested only then it will be valid if he goes. Otherwise, it is not valid because Honorable Supreme Court has laid down that. Now, with regard to this, there are other authorities also. He Rathinam, Gyan Paul. What is your opinion about that? So in Sri Ratidam versus Union of India, it was said that the section is unconstitutional, that uh, the section is constitutional, that a person ca cannot die. Sri Ratidam, Sri Ratidam, that pers uh, the section is sorry unconstitutional, that right to life and personal liberty does not include right to die. But in Gyankar versus State of Punjab, the court held that the section is unconstitutional. That uh, right to die also inclu uh, is included under Article 21. That was. Whether this was, you are confused about both the sections, both the authors. P. Rathinam is saying this thing. In P. Rathinam, it was held that everyone is having the right to die. But in Gyanpur, because Gyanpur, there was a constitutional thing. In Gyanpur, remember that, because sometimes simply they can ask about. That is also. Or whenever you are explaining this, yes, all the whole students listen to me this. When you are explaining it, you are having sufficient ideas in your mind. Don't stop. Expand your answer. Now, here you would have touched a P. Rathinam also, Gyankar also, Dusri um, Shanborg also. You would have touched that because you are having you are having opportunity. To explain in detail when you are having sufficient material in your mind, don't stop. Let them stop you. Let them stop you, otherwise, you don't stop. If you are having some ideas, explain that ideas to utilize their time so that they may not ask any other question. But they are at liberty, they can stop you at any time. Whenever they stop you, even they 
interrupt you. Don't bother. Stop there because you are there to give answer to their question. We are not there to explain our whatever. Our, if they stop us, stop there and start saying something else which, which they ask. Otherwise, you have given very good answers today. Keep, keep the maintain this uh, momentum in coming because you are having 10 or 12 days we can say not more than that but we will try we will try to build your confidence because practice makes it as perfect it is practice this is how you are building your confidence no doubt it is not material that you were not going to answer it is not material nobody will say you anything but you have given answer to many questions very effectively. Yes, sir, one question from your side. What is not consent as per section 90 of the IP? What does the amount to consent under section 90 of the IP? Under section 90 of IP, if the person has given consent under fear of injury or misconception of fact or under intoxication or that person is unsound mind or below the age of 12 years, then that consent will not be valid consent. Uh, yes, Shivani, for section 452 of IPC is misused by the police and misused by the company and staff. 452. So the section relates to how stress passed Observation. after preparation for causing uh, hurt, death, or wrongful restraint. Chahat, can you explain? 452? Yes, sir. 452. 452 means when somebody has caused some injuries by entering into the house inside. Now, generally, if injuries have been caused under Section 323, it is non cognizable offense. Police will not register an FIR. They are justified to say that we are not competent to register an FIR because 323 is non cognizable. No, injuries are there. Injuries are there on the person. But they put section 450 that these injuries were caused inside the house, not outside the house. Now that is mostly misused by putting because 452 it is it is cognizable FIR can be registered moreover it is uh, non billable punishment is also more that is how it is misused yes and one question when an anticipatory bail is granted what conditions can be imposed by the court the court can impose conditions uh, that he will not leave the country without court's permission uh, that he will not tamper with the evidence, he will not induce uh, use induction or uh, threat or promise to anybody who is familiar with the facts of the case. And the court can further, uh, regarding the circumstances of the case, put more conditions also as per the case. Ishwani, suppose the child has committed some murder, he is put in here. How he will try, how he will be tried, how we can punish that child? So 14 year old is a juvenile and uh, CRPC will not be applicable because section 27 uh, says the jurisdiction of juveniles will be under Juvenile Justice Act 2015. He will be tried over there uh, before the Juvenile Justice Board. And then also if they think that he no, should be given... No, when you are having chance, speak something more about that. Under Juvenile Justice Act also if the board thinks that he has committed serious offence, he should be given punishment, then, then they will transfer him before the session judge and he will be tried as an adult. Can they transfer such a 14 year old child to the session judge? So they Absolutely will transfer not. the age age ranges between 16 to 17. Remember that you uh, committed the mistake there. It is 16, 16 below 14 year they have to try. Whether they can give some punishment for example, uh, whether board can send that child to jail for three months or six months or one year? 
so they can uh, ask him to do community service whether he can be punished or not, imprisoned, whether he can be in prison to jail. Can he be maximum three years, sir? Absolutely no. Child cannot be sent to jail because he is to be reformed. He cannot be sent to jail. He can be asked to uh, serve community. He will be indulged in community services only. And he cannot be punished. He cannot send him to jail. Otherwise, he will mix up with the hardcore criminals there and he will become hardcore criminals. That is why he has a criminal question. What is the effect of a defective charge? And can the conviction be set aside on this ground? Uh, relating to defective charge provision is given 464 of CRPC. That if there is any kind of defect, but it uh, does not uh, it is not prejudicial to the accused it does not affect the case then uh, court will not take uh, consider it but if it uh, there is a failure of justice because of that defect court can uh, ask to retry the case or reframe the charge and try the case yes what is the evidentiary value of a time declaration uh, evidentiary value is that uh, courts have to use rule of caution also that uh, there is some kind of independent source corroborating the traditional time declaration and then only court can rely on that evidence. Alright, Shoni, you take some rest. <laughs>